ministry of God's word is with simplicity and clarity, characterized by a unique wisdom that has challenged a new generation to live for God. His television, radio, and online broadcast, such as Living with Purpose and Power, Singles Reality Seminar, Breakthrough Prayers, to mention a few, have brought healing and encouragement to millions of people. He is the host of the yearly reinvent conference with thousands of people in attendance and other events such as Ignite Conference, Oxygen Conference, Impact Business Career Seminar and Leadership Essentials. Chris Ugo is a keynote speaker committed to empowering leaders at all levels to positively impact their lives, businesses and communities. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Pastor Chris Ugo. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand if you love the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, wow. I like to say a big, big thank you to PG for this special invitation. You and Pastor B, you're very close to our heart. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you for what you represent in the body of Christ. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your heart for the kingdom. Thank you for sowing into ministries. Your selfless approach to point to ministers in, uh, whether it's in Lagos, um, outside this nation, River State, all the people your ministry has been reaching in River State, they can't stop talking about you. Thank you for you and Pastor B. Um, we, were, we were so blessed to have the presence of Pastor B in our church during our women's conference. You people are so blessed. I hope you know that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. And I also like to thank you for this great opportunity to come share this weekend with you. We deeply appreciate this. Uh, Pastor Debo, you and the pastors and the entire team, we salute all the work everybody's doing. Whether you're, whether, you're serving, whether you're serving in children's church or you're serving in a hidden ministry somewhere, the Lord appreciates you, the kingdom is better because of you, and you can never lose your reward. Thank you for what you do for the kingdom. Were you blessed by Paige's session? Whoa! Whoa! I wanted to say, if I wasn't going to speak, I would have just felt, but just continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I hope you're ready for this weekend. This weekend, I believe that God put it together because of you. And um, you will miss your miracle blessings. The idea that God has for you, you will miss it. The things that God has packaged for you this weekend, you will miss it. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Today we ask that you breathe upon these words, change our hearts, transform our lives. Give everyone under the sound of my voice an encounter. Let Jesus alone be glorified. We thank you for the victory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and God's people say, Can you please shake two people's smile and say, it's really nice to see you today. And also, those of you, please you may take your seats. Those of you joining us online and at different locations and different places, I welcome you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you for that introduction. Part of that introduction that was missing is that I have one wife. 
And um, we have two girls. I, I am just enjoying my life. Um, um, it's just because of ministry. I, I don't know. Some people like to travel a lot, but I don't know. I like to be home with my girls. Um, but because the Lord will have us do God's work, so we have to travel. My, big, my oldest daughter has exams tomorrow. And um, if not for the kingdom, there's no way I would have been here. But the Lord made it possible. Amen. Amen. Um, so God, you know I'm doing your work. She has to pass miraculously. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, by the way, she read before, you know. <laughs> so it won't be bad if we trust God for her. Our exams will be supernatural. And every other person that has exams tomorrow, it will be supernatural. In Jesus' name. All right. <clears throat> Building wealth, God's way. Building wealth, God's way. Martin Luther King says, any religion that claims to be concerned about people without addressing the economic conditions that strangle them is a dry and useless religion. But Christianity is not useless. It's a loving relationship with God. We have a God that addressed not just our economic condition, but addressed our spiritual condition, addressed our emotional condition, Address our relational condition. The total man. We have a God who is not just addressing our economic condition, but gave himself to die for our economic condition. He died to deal with poverty, spiritual death, and sickness. I believe that this weekend has been ordained by God to change your story. And I pray that the God that you serve will give you blessings. In Luke's gospel chapter 2 verse 52, the NIV says that Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and in favor with man. That's our God. It's not one-sided, just purely economic. Yes, finance is good. But you see, wealth covers every other area. Wealth, emotionally, physically, financial, relational. That's what wealth is all about. It's good to have money. It's important you have money. But wealth is not just only money. So Jesus grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. So he paid attention to his mind. So he allowed his mind to develop. He used this mind like PG was sharing with us. He paid attention to his health. He didn't sacrifice his health on the altar of work. And then get money, then try to fix his health. No, he didn't do that. A green wisdom in stature, then in favor with God. So his relationship with God was good. And then relationally he was okay. I pray that we'll be able to cover how we can invest in relationship. And this relationship help, help us financially and in abundance. I trust God that we'll be able to cover that this weekend if it's possible. There is a wealthy place for God's people. Put your hand over your chest. Say, there is a wealthy place for me. God has designed a wealthy place for me. My eyes are open. I will see my wealthy place. 
I will enter my wealthy place. I will enjoy my wealthy place. This is my season. I will not be distracted. There is a wealthy place for me. Hallelujah. So a wealthy place is a particular state of abundance that God has promised his people in the word that is necessary for you and I to be able to fulfill our purpose in blessing other people. We are so blessed. We're enjoying abundance. It is promised to us. We're going into overflow and then we're using it to fulfill the purpose of blessing other people on this earth. So that wealth has a purpose. That blessing has a purpose. That state of abundance and overflow is for a reason. Not just for the fact of having things, but is having things so that through me, other people can also be blessed. Of course, there are many forms of wealth. Spiritual wealth, relational wealth, physical wealth, financially. God made man in his image and after his likeness and then he blessed man. And said be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, have dominion. Just like Pastor PG mentioned, PG mentioned to us. God made man in his image and after his likeness. And then God blessed man. He empowered man to prosper. He blessed man to be able to succeed. He blessed man to be able to do well. He empowered man to make a difference. So he created man. He blessed man. He empowered man. And if you read 29, he gave man seed. So in other words, you have power, you have dominion, but you also have seed. So anything you want to do, you have seed. You can use your seed to create it. You want a table? There's no table. There's a garden and there's tree. If you're creative enough, according to PG, you can, in this garden, create chair and table. There are three levels of life that is described in the Bible. One is the insufficiency. Two, sufficiency. And thirdly, Abundance. Insufficiency is when you don't have enough to even meet your own needs. It is described in the Bible. It's a state in the Bible. And then there's the sufficiency where you have just enough to meet your needs. That's how you have, that's what you have. That's how you live. But there's also the abundance dimension. You have more than enough to meet your own needs. And then you have something left over to help meet the needs of other people. And I believe that God is bringing us into another dimension. God is moving us from a level to another level. Which one is your level? You will go higher than where you started from. Can you say a better amen than that? The purpose of abundance is not to live in excess wealth, but to have more than enough provision for every work that God has called us to do. Because God has called you and I to do something beautiful on the earth. Wealth, resources, finances, money. It all belongs to God. It all belongs to God. And that's the foundation. That's where we must start. Everything is, it belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. You know, I don't know why that is so difficult to start with. Everything belongs to God. He owns it all. He owns me. He owns you. He owns everything we own. Can you imagine he owns me, but he doesn't own my money? In Psalm 24, verse 1, it says, The, the earth is the Lord's. And the full and its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. So he owns it. He owns it as the creator. 
He owns me as the creator, but he also owns me as the redeemer. Even when I'm lost, he redeemed me back. So he owns me two ways. He owns me as my creator, but he also owns me as my redeemer. He says, silver and gold, they belong to our God. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. He said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Silver is mine, gold is mine. You know, and I want to commend you for this weekend. Because not, it's not everywhere that people are bold enough to expose their congregation to listen to what God has to say about abundance. What God has to say about wealth. What God has to say about relationship. What God has to say about spiritual wealth. But I celebrate your devotion, your commitment to truth and your courage and boldness. Let's celebrate the leadership of this house. I say, let us celebrate the leadership of this house. It is the believer's rightful expectation to acquire wealth. God is not against you having wealth. God is not against it. If you read the Bible, you see that the Bible supports it. In Ephesians, we're going to quickly look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19, the New Living Translation. If you have that, it says it is a good thing if you have that. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. Ecclesiastes 5, 19, the New Living Translation says it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. So it is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. That's what the Bible said. It says it's a good thing. It's a good thing. If the Bible says it's a good thing, don't change it. It is a good thing to receive wealth from God. So we see that wealth comes from God. So he says it's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. Don't take one and leave the other. You say, I just love it. I only have good health. Are you going to eat it? I only just thank God. I just have the money. What of your health? Deuteronomy 8, 18, like PG read, he says, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which is swore to your fathers as it is this day. He cannot give you power to get wealth when he's against wealth. So we must have a foundation where our mindset is transformed we are renewing or renewed our mind to accept that God is not against wealth. Our mind is renewed for the reason for wealth. Our mind is renewed for how to acquire wealth God's way. Psalm 112 verse 1 to verse 3. He said, praise the Lord, blessed. Everybody say, blessed. blessed. He says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. God couldn't have been against wealth when he says that wealth and riches ought to be in our house. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. So do you fear the Lord? He says you're blessed. Do you fear the Lord? I mean reverence God. Do you have a reverential fear for God where you value him, honor him, worship him, respect him? He says, you are blessed. He says, if you follow him all the way, it's not bad to have wealth and riches in your house. <laughs> he 
Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Proverbs 10 verse 22. I hope you like the Bible. We're going to read lots of it today. It's good for you. Take a lot of it at night, in the morning, afternoon, and evening time. It works. Proverbs 10, 22, the amplified version of the Bible, the classic. He said, the blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. Neither does toiling increase it. He says, the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. And he adds no sorrow. So if God is against wealth, if God doesn't want us to have wealth, if he doesn't want us to have abundance, if he doesn't want his people to be blessed, why would he have all this in his word? In his sacred word. Are you not aware that this word is sacred? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, the New Living Translation. It says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that by his poverty he could make you rich. And a lot of people have changed that. They say he's rich in a different area. Rich in this. They explain whatever they want to explain. Read the entire chapter. It's talking about money. It's talking about finances. It's talking about giving. It's talking about generosity. It's talking about the things they have to put together. The verse before that, the verse after that, the beginning. Everything is talking about collection. Everything is talking about money. But you must understand the word rich. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're coming from River State, we put it like this. I get money past my neighbor. That's not what we're talking about. Rich is the word to be abundantly supplied. And that's the word the Amplified uses. You are abundantly supplied for whatever God has called you to do. You are abundantly supplied for whatever is needed per time. And there are lots of things that God is going to need from you that money cannot be able to pay for. As much as money is needed. Our covenant connection with Abraham through Jesus makes life better. We have a connection by covenant with Abraham through our Lord Jesus. So now we're joint heirs with Jesus for Abraham's blessing. Now, and I understand a lot of people know the song, Abraham's blessings are mine, Abraham's blessings are mine. You know, but they don't really understand or have information like Pedro was talking about information. Have the information, get the word about Abraham so quickly because of um, this is a teaching weekend, it's important. In Genesis 12, verse 1 to verse 4, he said, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation, and I'll bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I'll curse him who curses you, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. But if you see the next chapter, Genesis 13 verse 2, the amplified version of the Bible, the classic says, now Abraham was extremely, use the word extremely rich. Wow. So when you say Abraham's blessings are yours, are you really ready? Or you just joined them? Do you understand it? So you have to look at this Abraham. If you say his blessings are yours, then you have to know a little bit about him. He said, now Abraham was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. You know, and the amazing thing with all of this thing, the Bible still calls him a friend of God. This should affect his righteousness. This should affect his worship of God. He can't have this kind of resources and still be committed to God. He is a smart man. Some people just let resources take them away from God. Take them away from church. I'm going to come to that before we close tonight. God helping us. 
If you also look at Genesis 24 verse 1, the amplified version of the Bible, the classic says, now Abraham, this man was so blessed. He was extremely rich in cattle, in livestock, in silver, in gold. But look at Genesis 24 verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So God not only gave him resources, but God gave him long life. So when you're talking of Abraham's blessings are yours, understand and open your heart, release your faith for long life. Blessed him in all things. Blessed him in all things. The contemporary English version says that he, the Lord had made him rich and he was successful in everything he did. Only God can do that. In Genesis 25, verse 7 and verse 8, the amplified version of the Bible, the days of Abraham, the days of Abraham's life was 175 years. Then Abraham's spirit was released and he died at a good, ample, full old age. So when you're saying Abraham's blessings are mine, it's important that you understand what is involved so that you know how to, we call it faith focus, how to focus your faith. So he died at a good, ample, full old age. An old man satisfied and satiated. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Satisfied and satiated before he left. And then he was gathered to his people. And that covenant reaches out to us. If you're a student of the Bible in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 15 to verse 17, the amplified version of the Bible. He says, be mindful of his covenant forever. Be mindful of his covenant forever. The promise which he commanded and established to a thousand generations. 16 says, the covenant which he made with Abraham and he sworn promise to Isaac. So he moves it from Abraham. He moves it to his son, to Isaac. And then look at verse 17. Then he confirmed it as a statute to Jacob, and then he gets to Jacob, and then he moves again to Israel. Then for an everlasting covenant. Now that's Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. This is where we are now. The amplified version of the Bible. It says, therefore, therefore, inherit, that's what the classic says, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith. You want to inherit the promise? It's the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace or merited favor to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all descendants, not only to the devotees and adherents of the law, but also to those who share the fate of Abraham, who is thus the father of us all. Help me touch two people say that includes you and 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 you. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. And then we read 29, New Living Translation puts it like this. It says, through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Then look at 29. Now, and now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Somebody celebrate that today. Celebrate that today. Somebody celebrate that today. God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Hallelujah. But you see, the will of God for us is not automatic. The will of God, God wills, for instance, that 
all should be saved. That all should come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But is everybody saved? So the will of God for us doesn't just come on us automatically. The people that are saved are the people that have made the decision to do what they are supposed to do. And then they are saved. So this will of God here is not just going to come without our participation, without our involvement, without our cooperation. So everything God wills for us, we must be involved. We must participate. You know, you can't just say, oh, I was in church. So they preached it, they prayed it, and then it fell on me. There's a part of that. But you want to really enjoy the will of God? You have to cooperate with that will. You have to participate with, within that will. You have to get involved in that will. So this weekend, God wants you involved. He doesn't want you to just hear and go. This is about your future. It's about your destiny. People coming after you if Jesus delays his coming. People coming after you are counting on you to maintain the right focus today. Maintain the right focus this weekend. Children unborn, are, they are yet unborn, but their desire, let me tell you, is that you be committed. Committed to God and committed to his word. It is God that gives us the power to get wealth. In fact, the NIV of that passage says it gives us the ability to produce wealth. It is God that gives us the ability to produce wealth. The contemporary English version says, it is God that gives us the strength to make a living. It's important before you begin to say, because if you read the context of, of Deuteronomy chapter 8, it says you get so blessed, then you come to the point where you begin to say, my might has gotten me this far. I am like this because I am really brilliant. I am like this because I am this. I have this because I am this. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Thank God for what you can do. But he says, never forget but that it is him that gives you the power. It's him that gives you the ability it's him that gives you the strength. It's him that gives you the wisdom. It's him that gives you the needed help to get wealth. Lift your right hand and say, I receive help. I receive grace in the name of Jesus to get wealth. In the name of Jesus, I receive divine ability to get wealth. In Jesus' name, say amen. Genesis 12 verse 2, the Amplified Version of the Bible says, I will make of you a great nation. This is what God told Abraham. I'll make of you a great nation and I will bless you. The Amplified says, I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. That's the purpose of wealth, of blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Oh no, I just want to be blessed. I just want to be blessed. No, 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 you are blessed to be so that you can be able to dispense favor to others. You are most fulfilled in life when you are benefiting somebody else. No fruit can enjoy itself. No fruit. It is when you eat mango, you smile. Mango can't eat itself and smile. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, this is why God gives you wealth. He says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance. For his children's children. That's how the Jews live. So they, they talk about generational blessing. You know, generational curses are very popular. But generational blessings are not popular. And yet, that's where we should be focusing on. Generational blessing. So a good man, that's why, that's why God wants to give you resources. 
so that you can live an inheritance, not live debts busy. Live an inheritance for your children's children. The Jews, the way they do is you live, so like now, what you are gathering together huh, is not for your own children, it's for your children's children. Because your grandfather made provision for your own life when he was alive. Are you still here? So now, I'm, what I, everything I'm doing now is towards my grandchildren. So you see that they are generationally ahead of us. If you don't have wealth, what are you going to use to do that? Saliva? Everybody in the community hurts a man that lives debt for his family. Even during his burial, people are not happy. They want their money. Yeah, we're sad he's died, but you, who's going to pay me? I'm telling you, you know, if somebody's owing you and dies, listen, you have to act a certain way so that they don't think you, you're not touched by their death. Because while you are there sympathizing with the people, you are still wishing, why is this man going to die without my money? Like <laughs> so, oh, I'm so sorry. I, everybody, uh, please be encouraged, encouraged. Why is this man going to die without my money? I had planned for this money. Eh? Yeah, you can still write it off and do all of that. But then, you know, it gets to you. Why didn't he just pay before, transfer the money before he now died? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 And God is able to make all grace Everybody say all grace, all grace. Look at the word he used in the Amplified He says every favor and earthly blessing God is able to do that Make all grace Every favor and earthly blessing Come to you How? Come to you how? Say it if you're not scared of it one more time, say it again. You sound very close to it. Say it again. Hallelujah. Come to you in abundance so that you may, you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient. Pay attention. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable. That's the reason for wealth in your hands. Without, wealth without purpose leads to materialism. When wealth doesn't have a purpose, when you don't give wealth a purpose, it leads us away. It leads to materialism. So quickly, reasons to gain wealth. There are selfish reasons to gain wealth. There are societal reasons to gain wealth. But there are also scriptural reasons to gain wealth. Selfish reasons to gain wealth is that you just want it for all the attention it's going to give you so that people will know that you serve Don Hammer. That a joke? Am I your mate? Bad reason. So when you walk with God who searches the heart, you must walk on your heart. I, I, I want my neighbor to, you know, like an oppressor. You want to show the people on your street. And amazingly, we're supposed to be Christians, but we want to pepper people. <laughs> Bad reasons. You know, if you live around where I come from, 
So they gather, people just work so hard from January till about November, December, and then December they go to the village. I don't know if they do it here, if, you, if people from this church get to do it, but in, in our place they, they get to do that. So they, they buy all kinds of things to go and show people that their community have somebody. <laughs> And give themselves also unnecessary exposure and lure enemies. <laughs> so that's, that's selfish. God doesn't like that. Then there's societal reasons to get wealth. When you're in competition with people. You're competing with them. They bought, they bought in a, a version, you bought a higher version. Or you are saving up to buy a higher version to show them. And social media has not helped it, bro. Especially Instagram. We thank God for Instagram. It's beautiful. People use it for business. People use it for several other things. But the influence of some of these sites, uh, even TikTok, some of these things, the influence they have had, the negative influence has been so terrible. So you want to show your colleagues in the office. You want to show your neighbors. You want to show people in the church. That's wrong. But there's scriptural reason to gain wealth. Which is one, for God's glory. Because God made all things to serve his purpose. And whatever we do, we must do for the glory of God. Say amen. amen. Another re scriptural reason to gain wealth is to further his kingdom work on earth. To further his kingdom work on earth. Next, to provide for your family. To provide, because anybody, he said, anybody that doesn't provide for their family is worse than an infidel. To provide for your own family. Next, to pay your debts and commitments and not run away. Tell them I'm not around. <laughs> My daddy said I should tell you he's not around. <laughs> I'll say, okay, go and tell him that I'll wait until I collect my money. <laughs> to help better other people's lives, especially those in the household of God. That's another scriptural reason God wants you to have wealth. Especially those of the household of faith. There are people that come to church that need our care and our support. They worship under the same roof with us. They lift up their hands, but their own story is different. If they tell you their story, you start crying. We don't even know how they get to church. We don't know how they go home. We don't know what happens to them after service. What happens to them that day, that week? What happens to their children? They're in the church. How do you do? You can't do that if you don't have wealth. God cannot give you such a responsibility to use your sweat to deal with it. And next, to be a blessing to humanity. He wants you to, to be a blessing to humanity. You know, something very profound I read in Matthew 25 from 35 to 40. When you get home, please read it. And Jesus was talking about this and he was talking about, you know, he said, when I, was, when I was incarcerated, you came to visit me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Uh, they said, Lord, when did we see you in prison? When did we see you naked? When did we see you hungry and fed you? When did we see you thirsty and gave you to drink? <clears throat> he said, when you do it for this, any of these ones, you've done it unto me. Listen, you can't do that. You can't clothe him without money. You can't give him anything to drink without money. You can't you can do it without wealth. That's why you ought to have wealth. Je everything Jesus has, everything has asked you to do in terms of taking care of people requires wealth. So don't, shut, don't have a mental shutdown when it comes to creating wealth or acquiring wealth, but channel it so that you can have a purpose and you do it well. Say amen. Margaret Thatcher has a quote. He says, 
No one will remember the good Samaritan if you only had good intentions. He had money too. He said, take care of this wounded man. Eh? Take care. Take care. Take care. I've been thinking about how to take care of this man. No? It will be a good thing to take care of this man. No? You know, I will, I will change people. I will change this man's life. Oh. Eh? But you see the, the thing the man dropped there. He, gave, he put something there. He said, if you spend more, when I come, I will take care of it. The more resources you have, the more you can help others, the more you can spread the message of love and redemption. So don't shut down. Especially, especially those of us that are gifted to create. You see, because we're not gifted alike. There are those that they just take one thing, they have multiplied it to 500. So they have five, they move it to 10. They have two, they move it to... But there are some that take one, it takes them six months, one year. There are, there, there are people that they are like money making machine. Don't stop. Say, oh, I already have a house. Get another house. So that we can look for a sister that doesn't have anything and come to service. And PG will say, a brother met me before, before the service started and gave me the key to this house. Sister, you told me last week you people are suffering concerning accommodation. Can you just come close here? And then he takes the key of the house. I say, may the Lord bless you. Now, apart from the other things the ministry is already doing, can you imagine we doing that times two? If we cover times two, times three, we never stop because there's still so much to do. Proverbs 31, 13 verse 11, say wealth not earned but won in haste, or unjustly or from the production of things for vain or detrimental use, such riches will dwindle away. But he who gathers little by little will increase in riches. There's the righteous way to obtain wealth and that's what the child of God must focus on. If we have the time, we're going to mention a few of them this weekend. Make sure you don't miss any of the sessions. So wealth will flow into my life through these channels. Number one, quickly. Through walking, you know, I'm walking. As I walk, wealth comes into my life. Because I'm walking, it says in Ecclesiastes 9.10, it says, whatever you do, whatever you find, your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Wealth will flow into your life through gifts. People will give you gifts. Gifts. Luke's Gospel chapter 6, verse 38, the Amplified puts it like this. It says, give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will they pour into your pouch formed by bosom of your robe used as a bag. For with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use, when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. Wealth will also flow to you through what we call inheritances. So you inherited it. Inheritances. My late father left some things for us. So we got it and we enjoyed it. In Genesis 25 verse 5, the New Living Translation, it puts it like this. It says, Abraham gave everything he owned to his son Isaac. So that's how wealth comes also. You see, but some of our parents, they gave us debt. We inherited the wrong things. But bless God, some, some did so well. They allowed us to inherit their good name, inherit education, inherit... If you're here today and your parents were such a huge blessing to you, lift your hands and just give thanks for your parents. Whether you're online or you're joining us in any of the expressions, take a moment, lift your hands and be grateful for your parents and thank God. Can you say a prayer for your parents? Because they left good things for you and your siblings. They sacrificed... Even if it's not your parents, but your guardian, take a moment and give thanks. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So wealth also flows to you through investments. 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 As you invest, wealth comes. 
We're going to expand on that this weekend. Wealth also comes to you through different compensations. So you are just compensated. Some people think it's unbiblical to be compensated or to, to not to receive compensations. No! It's scriptural. Exodus 21 verse 18 and 19, the New Living Translation says, Now suppose two men quarrel and one hits the other with a stone or fist and, injured the, pers and the injured person does not die but is confined to bed. If he is later able to walk outside again, even with a crutch, the assailant will not be punished but must compensate. Everybody say compensate. Yes, must compensate his victim for lost wages and provide for his full recovery. So when they do that from your office, do that in your community, do that somewhere else, open your hands and receive that. Because that's part of how God is going to bring wealth to you through different kinds of compensations. And another way God will bring wealth to you is through favor. God will cause men and they will be divinely motivated to use their position influence, resources, and the ability and they will assist you. Can you say amen? amen? Another way God will bring wealth to you is through your abilities. Through your abilities. The things you have, the things you have that God has blessed you with. You are using it, you are engaging it. And in return, wealth is coming to you. There are a few things you have to remember about money as we close. One, money is a tool. Is a tool, you use it to get what, what you want done. You can use it to get love. You can use money as a tool to send people to school. Next, don't fall in love with money. Don't fall in love with money. Let me say it louder. Don't fall in. <laughs> Contemporary English version, Hebrews 13 verse 5. Contemporary English version, the A part says, don't fall in love with money. Don't fall in love with money. Fall in love with God. You see, because when you fall in love with money, it can make you desperate. You can do strange things for money. Next, don't measure your worth by your money. Never you measure your worth by your money. Don't measure your worth by your money. You're valuable before God. You are forgiven. You're loved. You're accepted. Don't measure. You know, when I have money, I'm really somebody. And that's how some people do it. Don't measure your worth by... Don't compromise. Don't compromise your values to get money. Look, any, anyhow. No, don't do that. Help me look at two people beside you say, bro, sister, don't do that. Just shake your head, say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, I know some will do anything for money, but don't join them. Don't measure other people's worth by your own money, too. Oh, I have more than them. Who will be if I'm talking? When people like us are talking, you should keep quiet and listen. Point of correction. How much do you have? Stop saying that. Stop doing that. And stop encouraging people that do that. Don't allow money to take priority over the things of God. The things of God must be the things of God. Hallelujah. God must always be number one, not money, not things. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And lastly, remember to be rich towards God. Remember to be rich towards God. Read that parable. He said the man had everything. He said, I will tear this down. I will build this. I will add this. I will add that. I will add that. But that same night, his soul was required of him. You see, that's the way the life of somebody that has all these things, but he wasn't rich towards God. Say with me, in Jesus' name, I receive grace. I receive ability to make wealth for God's glory. I declare today, I make wealth Bible way. I receive creative ideas to create wealth God's way. I see things that others are not seeing 
I hear things that others are not hearing. My eyes are opened by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see differently. I'm a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Increase comes to me. Abundance comes to me. Resources comes to me in the name of Jesus. Can you please stand on your feet as we declare in Jesus' name? Say with me, say in Jesus' name. I declare from today, I am favored by God. I am anointed by God. I am blessed by God. I go out blessed and I come in blessed. This weekend, I receive revelation. I receive ability. I receive grace to create wealth. Wealth and riches are in my house. I am the righteous. In Christ, I am righteous. I am the seed of God. The greater one lives inside of me. Greater than he that is in the world. I don't make excuses. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I begin a project. I finish a project. I don't abandon projects. I am a finisher. I declare today every project that God has given to me help is coming. It is finishing. It is getting done. I am moving forward. I am making progress. In the name of Jesus. I am unstoppable. Shout it, let the devil hear you. I am unstoppable. One more time, I am unstoppable. I pray for you online, in person, different expressions that this period supernaturally that God will move men and women to use their position, use their influence, use their resources, use their ability, they are assisting you now. They are assisting you now. They are assisting you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. God from this season is bringing the right people that are critical for your next level of success. They are coming, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. And they are coming into your life in the name of Jesus. Put a hand as a point of contact over your forehead. I receive wisdom, insight, creativity, idea, innovations that are necessary for my next level in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Somebody give him praise.